All right, welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey, and I'm here with Leah and Jordan. Uh, Jordan, Chris, and Leah, please say your last name because I should have <laughs> got spell checked on that before. Okay. <laughs> Dorchenez. Dorchenez. Yes. And uh, both of these guys are two of my new favorite people. Um, they're dating, and they're the cutest couple ever. Oh, and uh, they're also both experts in nutrition, and they really know their stuff. Um, stuff. Amateur gardeners, or you guys yeah. have the expertise? You could say amateurs Amateur. for sure. <laughs> Moving but, um, up slowly. Yeah, these guys know their stuff, so we're going to be covering a lot of things, nutrition, um, so overall wellness, and it's going to be fun. So yes. um, so how did you guys both get started with what you guys are doing right now, and um, did you guys grow up always healthy lifestyle? Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't grow up healthy lifestyle. You know, I grew up typical American kid, fast food on the way to the soccer game, and eating hot dogs at the soccer field or it, you know whatever, <laughs> yeah. whatever whatever the parents do in front of me lunchable so you, sandwiches <laughs> whatever was easy bags of chips yeah cereal and oatmeal for breakfast whatever so yeah. i think that's how everybody kind of starts out but then later later in life you kind of figure out that you don't maybe you're not operating mentally and physically on uh, on those types of foods so you, at some point you got to figure out a way to, to switch it up so. right right yeah ditto um, like I said, bologna and ramen that was always in our cabinets, always <laughs> yep. cheap and easy, but it made us happy. We were fine. We didn't know any different, you know, growing up age eight, nine, ten, going, going to soccer, you grab pop tart for practice. I think it all kind of started changing for me in college, like, um, freshman and sophomore year, more of the same, you know, fast food, whatever. You don't have any money as a kid in college, so mm-hmm. you you just you, you do what you can. You know, you, you eat what's in front of you, you eat what's easy, what's cheap, you know, what you can get your hands on. But uh, my junior, junior year, I started transitioning a little bit. You know, I decided I'm going to get off of fast food and I'm going to start, you know, learning how to cook a little bit. Um, cook my own meals, maybe feel a little bit better, lose a little bit of weight, you know, and just just try to learn about what I'm, what I'm putting in my body. Was there somebody that like you looked up to that did that or did you just look into it yourself? Yeah, it's funny you ask that cuz I was actually writing about this the other day. Um I I met this guy at a barbershop, you know, you go down, get shoot pool, <laughs> drink beer at the barbershop and kind of hang out on, on Saturday and uh this guy came rolling in one day and he was clearly from out of town. He had a tray of grass in one hand and um green shot glasses in another hand and I was like what what in the world is this well he was uh he was selling wheatgrass wheatgrass shots so that was really my first like eye-opening thing to like what is this yeah Yeah. what like what in the world is this I was hungover I bought one off of them it (laughs) cured me immediately so I was like okay cool I'm I'm in you know yeah and we you know we, we became friends and he he taught me how to grow it and I would buy trays off of it off of him every week um, to kind of support his business, and it was like my breakfast. So I'd wake up, I'd juice my, you know, trim my grass and put it in a juicer and take my shot, and off to class I would go. And uh, started feeling better, started making better grades, started killing yeah. it in the gym, and I was like, okay, there, you know, there's something to this. Right. So that's when it all kind of started for me. That's cool. What yeah. about what about you? Did you have somebody kind of like lead you towards that? Or mine was slightly different. So. Towards the end of high school, I spread my wings from a long-term boyfriend mm-hmm. and dove right into partying. So I gained, like, straight out of high school, roughly 50 pounds. Wow. Right? And it got to a point where finally I looked at the scale and I thought, oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, <laughs> no one told me I looked like this. or But no, no one thought I looked overweight because, well, they're not me. But I was very proportioned. Mm-hmm. So whenever I realized how uncomfortable I was and the way my clothes fit, you know, I didn't want to walk up the stairs at school because I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I've got to do something. So my brother went to school for exercise physiology. um, And I just kind of leaned towards him. But he was in Morgantown where I was in Charleston. So it was about communicating with him on how to get on a track of how am I going to lose this weight. I had a couple of friends that were interested in getting gym memberships, so, you know, I had a couple of influencers in that sense, but it was more so to feel more comfortable in my own skin, not necessarily the mental, like, biohacking side yet, 
but it started, I was probably about 20, 2021 when I got my gym membership. Okay. I have actually been a member of my gym since 2010, so seven years now. Nice. Right? Um, I love my gym. I can't help it. Where do you go? <laughs> anytime Fitness. Anytime. I'm a, <laughs> Shout out Anytime. <laughs> I'm, I'm an Anytime girl. I always have been. So, nice. And, you know, once I started seeing little pieces of fat falling off and yeah. the clothes fitting better yeah. and smaller sizes, I was like, okay. And then I'd hit plateaus. I'd cry. My brother would be like, what are you eating? Well, I had a bagel for breakfast. <laughs> then I had some macaroni and cheese for lunch. He's like... No. Yeah. You know, like, Leo, look at what you're actually eating. You know, you're not going to start losing the weight that you want to lose until you get your diet right. So then that's when I started getting the diet. But it was all still in the goal of looking and feeling better. Outside and, appearance and yes, all that. Not, not so much in the, in the brain sense. So once, once Jordan and I got together, that's probably when... About three years ago, you know, actually like hacking your own body like inside Stop and out. clicked and... It started, you know, it, it meshed. Right. It, it went, started going, and we just really had a perfect stopped. combination. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, you know, my ball was rolling and the fact of like I wanted to lose weight and like build muscle, lose fat. I just needed to figure out the way that I could do it and be optimal. Right. And be sustainable too. Because I the same think time. whenever you have that like... The mindset of you want to lose it to look good it's not a big enough why right yeah and that was that was my issue yeah because now it's not so much to have a six-pack because I don't have a six-pack but I wake up in the morning and I feel good right I, I know that I'm gonna have clear good thoughts throughout the day mm-hmm. not oh I need a nap or oh I need a Red Bull or oh I'm just gonna get this candy bar because it's got some sugar in it mm-hmm. it's more like I'm not going to eat so that way I can start burning fat Mm -hmm. and, you know, go along it that way. Um, So, yeah, but I've been on the weight loss and health journey, honestly, since probably 2010. So about seven, eight years. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I think pretty much that lines up right with me too, 2010, because it took me a couple years after I got out of high school to like really care and to, to get on track. So we met in 2014, and we were still kind of like in that. Let's party. Let's and party drink and, and eat what we want. Yeah, right. but we were working out, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, and we would go out to restaurants and eat healthy, healthy food from what we thought. I think that was another reason why me and him got along so well is because we both worked. We both worked throughout the week, so our schedules kind of, you know, they went well together. And then we'd get off work, and it's like, hey, what are you doing? You want to go to the gym? Not like, hey, what are you doing? You want to go get a beer? We'd be like, let's go to the gym, and then watch a movie, or go to go get dinner, and then I'll see you next time, or whatever. Yeah. And it wasn't all, like, we started, like, separating in that sense, because I think we kind of, like, bounced off of each other in the sense of... It's accountability. Like, let's, yeah, let's go yeah. to the gym. Like, what are you doing tonight? Yeah. We should go to the gym. <laughs> yeah. No, I think when you have that support, it makes all the difference. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I've always been the one to, to, I need like a work a workout partner to go yep. to the gym with me to kind of like, you know, I want to be, going. I wanna, yeah, I want to, yeah. I want to beat you. I want to do more reps than you or right. what, or whatever. Um, and you know, obviously, obviously she's a girl, so we don't really compete that much in the gym anymore. <laughs> Cause you kill them, right? But, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, Leah, <laughs> <laughs> Leah, quit flexing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, so I guess, when it, so you guys both got into working out, you know, you're researching it more and more nutrition. Um, I mean, was there something that really triggered you? I know you guys are both into, like, Dave Asprey. Um, mm-hmm. can't, I'm, Asprey. I'm breaking Dave, Dave Asprey. Asprey. Yeah. yeah. I mean, was that a big thing for you guys, or what um, What kind of pushed you guys along on that aspect of it? Um, okay, so for me, I, I had long commutes to work. Mm-hmm. Over the last three years, I had worked for UPS, and they were sending me you know, Pittsburgh, Virginia Beach, you know, all over the place. So I I had long commutes and I got tired of listening to the same music over and over. So I started downloading podcasts. I started with Joe Rogan um, and he has... I love him. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he just has a who's who of guests on his show. I saw that you met him, right? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, we did meet him. (laughs) I I saw that picture. I was probably creeping that you're so No, it's okay. (laughs) No, but I saw that. I was like, I'm so jealous. Yeah, we got to knock that off our bucket list. I've actually met him a couple times. I met him at the Onnit Academy in Austin, and 
I think 2015, he was working out at mm-hmm. a gym that I was training at, and he's, I mean, he's a beast. He's, he's, a, he's a badass. Yeah, he, yeah, big motivation to me yeah, for definitely, him. Definitely. Right off the bat, I started listening to his podcasts, and he would bring, bring guests on, and I would listen to them, and I'd get interested in what they were doing, so I would listen to their podcast, and it right. just kind of started down this rabbit this hole. Rabbit I mean, hole. this <laughs> rabbit hole of, like, I just latched on to the Bulletproof podcast, Dave Asprey. He was doing this butter in your coffee thing, and I right. was like, what? What what in the world? But with my with my work work it it worked for me. Like I'm waking up, I'm in a hotel. I don't want to eat hotel breakfast every morning. So what can I do to get you know get my day started? And I started doing this butter and MCT oil in the coffee thing, like mm-hmm. Dave Asprey suggests, and uh, it worked for my schedule. So I would, that would be my first meal of the day. You know, I'd start there nine o'clock drink on that through you know 11 or noon and it would keep me full Mm -hmm. and it would keep me sharp mentally you know i I noticed a a mental edge um and just kind of built on that you know you listen to dave and then you start hearing more and more people are doing this bulletproof coffee or these fattier drinks or these fattier fattier meals in the morning and before that i was doing like your overnight oats, you know, you would soak oats and right. almond milk and maybe some cinnamon and blueberries and, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. But I would eat that and I would kind of crash at noon, one right. o'clock, I'd be sleepy and, and for no reason, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm eating a good, healthy, balanced breakfast of, you know, carbs and some fruit and some, you know. Right. I mean, you're young and shape. Mm-hmm. I mean, right. it just doesn't feel like that should be like the norm. Yeah, exactly. Not falling asleep. You know, I'm, I'm in a, on a package car. I was a uh, supervisor for UPS, so I'm riding around with drivers, and I'm, like, falling asleep in the yeah. passenger seat over here, and I'm like, what in the world's going on? So not until I found Dave Asprey and Bulletproof Coffee did I realize, okay, maybe there's something to this, you know, high-fat breakfast instead of guzzling down a bunch of carbs and oatmeal and fruit right. and things like that in the morning. So and it's total opposite of what people are taught, you know, eat low-fat, yeah. you know, it's... Yeah growing up right yeah. right it's, it's just like you you hear it all the time people are just like oh well, there's no fat in it so it's cool if i eat this mm-hmm. right but it's just like people are highly confused on very. what 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 it's just people just don't know you know what they don't know and yeah. it's they're just being taught all of marketing the wrong marketing schemes mm-hmm. yeah yeah i was listening to a uh, ben greenfield pod- podcast recently um i can't remember the guest's name but she was talking about the uh, inauguration meal that the president eats mm-hmm. and she was like you know you would be shocked that the foods that they're eating at the at, at this inauguration dinner are not the foods that we're taught we should be eating they're, really? they're, they're eating raw cheeses and sour creams and fatty fish and oysters and uh, beef pate you know liver right, pate right. like these really fatty cuts of meat they're not eating you know cheeseburgers and and you not know, catered by McDonald's. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're not doing that. So yeah. there's something to that. You know, the world's most, you know, our country's most powerful leaders yeah. are eating like that. So why aren't we eating like that, right. you know? Right, And all of us, might, not to get off topic, but I mean, you hear the same thing with like doctors and medications. It's like these, mm-hmm. a lot of these doctors aren't giving their kids the same medications that they're pushing out because it's financial. It's, it's a business. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I know we can get into that in a minute. Leah's got a whole, <laughs> a whole uh, her whole thoughts on that. But yeah. Um, so with the nutrition thing, I know like the whole fat, like you started increasing the fats you, that you took in. Um, you guys got really big into fermentation, and that's that's um, the whole gut health thing is a pretty big mm-hmm. trend right now, which I think is a good thing that it's that it's coming up more. Yeah. But as long as the right information is is getting out there, I guess right. <laughs> right. So if you guys want to kind of you know talk about different things you've been doing with that and what you've learned, well, Jordan actually started with the fermented milk which is the keeper. Like keeper. Yeah. 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 So he started on it and... 100- Did you make your own? Yes. yes. Okay. So completely honest, I have literally rode Jordan... Is it rode a board? Jordan's coattails <laughs> on this health journey <laughs> because like he would start something like the Bulletproof Coffee. Right. And I was like, uh, tried it, loved it. Keeper, I'm still kind of iffy mm-hmm. on, but like going through... These different foods, especially the more sour ones. Yeah. He has definitely raised the bar, but we started with the kefir. So he, we would do that, I, and I joined in on this one. 
put like blueberries in it or some sort yeah, of berry in it yeah. um, with some seeds, chia, flax seeds, and eat that for breakfast instead or yeah. at lunchtime, whenever you're done with your coffee, have that instead. Mm-hmm. You can just feel the difference in your body. Right. I mean, your bowel movements, you know, just the way that your your activity levels throughout the day, yeah. your productivity. Focus, everything. Yeah. Yeah. little yeah. probiotic punch right there in the morning right. is always good. And I think I actually replace the oats with that yeah. for, for a short time there. Mm-hmm. Like I was doing that. With the that. keeper, the berries. Yeah, and I was, seeds, that yeah. would have been my first meal of the day. And, Got you it. know, that was fine. But I just kind of felt like I was mm, too many calories too early in the day because mm-hmm. I was yeah. trying to guzzle that down and then drink my coffee down before noon. So I right. could eat a protein bar, you know. So it was just a little too much. But, it is a lot. But, yeah. you know, there's a time and place for it for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's something that I still use in my, in my diet. More recently I've been – I use the fermented milk – kefir yogurt whatever Mm -hmm. i call it yogurt because that's really what it is but it's just a little runnier you know right but it's really easy i mean you heat up some whole milk to about 92 degrees you use a little starter packet which i i've gotten from body ecology and another plenty of other ones out there you you use a little starter packet you mix it up real good and you pour it in a glass jar and you let it sit for 24 to 36 hours and it Mm -hmm. does its thing it ferments the lactose Mm -hmm. ferments and and it gives you a nice little nice little drink. I, I put it in my smoothies now, so I don't use it in the morning like I used to. But yeah. but I put it in my smoothies and it gives me a little you know, just a, another little boost, another little ingredient to add to a it dish. Is, that, it does taste similar to, to yogurt if you mm-hmm. if you are a yogurt yes. fan, you know. Well it's not your oikos. Oh know, no, I mean that's cream straight, cheese cake. Straight sugar. But, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, yeah. it's obviously you much gotta watch out for, for the added sugar and that right. stuff that they sell at the stores. I mean, you can find now, I mean, I've seen it all over. You can find grass milk, mm-hmm. grass fed um, yogurts. So yeah, they're, they're out there's there. There's different brands. Like there's like Stony Fields, and yeah, there's all kinds of different brands. They're all like over Siggies, the place. I think is but, the one. but for me, making it is just as easy. You know, you get the best milk that they've got at the grocery store. Maybe it's four or five dollars for a half gallon, and yeah. you've got, I mean, how many servings of yogurt do you got? You've got at least eight eight servings lot. of yogurt there. Mm-hmm. So it goes a long way. It stretches, and you use just a little bit of your your permanent batch to create the next batch yeah. so it's very it's can it's continuous yeah that's awesome not yeah. only that it's kind of like a little like home experiment yeah right it's a little science <laughs> take it, take it like, back i'm kind of a nerd so i like to do those kitchen science experiments yeah we and haven't done that. we haven't done the water keeper have we or did I you have, have a little bit have. yeah like i have i did water. it for a little while um I, my grains got is that how you make it with bad. grains they're yeah they're similar these, to the I don't really even know how to explain them. They're these like translucent grains like that little you just, crystals that come mm. in a they come in a package, just like the rest of the starter kits. Yeah. But, what do you what do you mix it in? Just water? Sugar water. Okay. Yeah, sugar gotcha. water. Because I, I, I saw on the body ecology site, there's like um, it's like a coconut water mm. kefir type thing, right? Is I have not concept? done that before, but it, you know, instead of doing sugar water, they're you using the coconut, sugar from the no, coconut. Or coconut water. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha. yeah. But. I, we're in West Virginia. You're not going to find a coconut tree, you know, right, around right. here. So good luck with that. You know, they don't even have coconuts in the stores. So exactly. it's just something I haven't tried, I but gotcha. would not be opposed to it. Yeah, and the fer- the whole topic of fermentation, like I love it. You know, we were we were just all at dinner. Um, I'm actually vegan for the for the little over a year, but I still love the whole fermentation process. Like, I know before I did that, I was drinking Keeper, and um, and for me, I was always cool with yogurt. So that's like I liked it. Um, but I mean, still being able to ferment veggies and make your own kombucha, that's mm-hmm. still, you can do it whether or not you're eating dairy or not eating dairy. So it's, there's always options for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys are doing both of those things. We are so. now. She's, she's kind of taken over on the kombucha thing. She's got some oh my, nice, I'm so proud of nice things. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited. Yeah. It's been a long way. It's been, I mean, we started back in October, I think. Yeah. We had a moldy batch, but now we've got one that's going strong right now. So. Yeah. We've started all over. Got new jars, new scobies. <laughs> Everything we got, we're good to go. I think we're going to make it after it's that. It's a learning process. <laughs> it do, you, is. do you want to kind of walk them through the process? So, for a lot of people don't know what kombuchas are, or if they do, they have no idea what a scoby is, no. or yeah, or what it is in general. It's a funny word. <laughs> Jordan can explain scoby. Yeah, I'm sure you could probably here, do a Jordan. better I, job. Um, it's here, it's here. Symbiotic so, culture. yeah, symbi- symbiotic culture of yeast and of bacteria and yeast. That's yeah. what a mm-hmm. scoby is. It's the, you know, the mother um, probiotic. You know what. It consumes the sugar and it releases all the B vitamins and you know probiotics and antioxidants into the tea that it's that it's kind of brewed in. Is that yeah yeah yeah? Um, 
So you start out with a starter culture and a starter SCOBY, which you know you can get sent in the mail. I mean, we got it off Amazon for five or six yeah, bucks. Yeah. So it's really I easy. I use like the site what was um, Kombucha Camp or something. Yeah, like that. Kombucha yeah. Mama. Yeah. Is that? There's there's a bunch of different. There's yeah, a there's whole a lot of different. There's a ton of them. So just sites, you know, yeah. Google it and you can find them. And then you you brew some tea. Use black tea to start. It makes the SCOBY nice and strong. And you add a certain ratio of sugar in it in, into the tea. It'll tell you right on the package, you know what what that ratio is. Well, once it cools down enough, you put it in, in you know in a glass jar with your with your scoby and let it do its thing. You know it takes about a month for you to get that first batch, and uh, use some vinegar to keep the pH low. All this stuff's kind of on it's, the packet. Yeah, it's, pretty, it's, it's, it's it's easy. It's yeah. pretty easy, and you get this nice little fermented drink. You know, it's just. Another way to add a little bit of health to your gut. You right. Know, and, and Better soda alternative. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And if you're feeling frisky, I've mixed it with vodka before. So Uh-oh. that's like a little, little drink hack mix for you there. So you yeah. can heal as you damage, right? That's right, right. exactly. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. And uh, I love these guys because they introduced me to fermented vegetables. And I was really nervous about it, but Leo walked me through it. And it's the easiest thing in the entire world. It really Just is. shred some vegetables, use a starter, pack it. Wait a few days and, and you're good to go. And Jordan's lucky because I have this skill in the kitchen where oh. I just love to chop things. Oh man, uh, you are lucky. Once I get yeah. started, like we're cooking dinner, he'll be like, man. "Don't dice that up that small." I'm like, "Why?" It's amazing. But you whenever like... it came to the last batch that we did of veggies, because mm-hmm. the very first one, we tried to use like a food processor. Oh. It ended up being a bigger mess than. <laughs> This is like a normal size. This food like, processor was older than me, first of yeah, all. Yeah, so it, was, was, it was actually a, like a huge machine. It really? was weird, ancient. My, but it was my neighbors. They were like 80 years old, and they just, it was it was a mess. It was yeah. a mess. We I think most of the time was spent cleaning up. Right. The second time, I was actually sick, so he kind of just winged it on his own, but he did great, and that was the batch that I started like eating more on, because he'd be like, put a little bit on your plate. And I was like, no, <laughs> yeah. no. And then finally I'd like start adding more and more and I was like, okay, I can do this. But this last time he was like, let's, up, let's clean everything. We just, you know, processed it, clean everything, dry it all off, chop it up. I'll get the juice going. We'll get the jars, you know, set up, we'll pack them and then we'll be done. And it worked just like that. Cause right. I just went over here and got in the zone. I think I might've been playing some music and just chop, chop, chop away. away. Because chop like, away. especially like beats and you know oh, it's messy your, your yeah. roots yeah. it's messy but it's also they're they're hard to cut right. through right <laughs> and when you're cutting through like i don't know 10 of them maybe yeah we do and big you're batches them up. Now. i was like trying to vitamix everything and even that was hard because it's it mm-hmm. can't it's, it's where it's so dense mm-hmm. it's hard to like get it to go in rotation right it took me a while yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I, i'll kind of walk you through the process of like what we found to be the easiest like she said we'll wash all the veggies veggies off mm-hmm. you know kind of segregate them out she'll start chopping and we will just get this the biggest pot or bowl that we can find and just start throwing these veggies as, as you chop just start throwing them in you know clear your cutting board off throw them in the pot clear yeah. your cutting board off throw them in the pot the starter culture that you need um i've played with different things before um and i don't know the ratios off the top of my head but we use body ecology there's a little starter pack I don't know. It might be thirty bucks, and you get like six of them. Yeah, I think it's less than that too. It, it might yeah. be. It, they go a long way. I mean, yep. these six packets will last me a year. You know, so thirty bucks over a year is not not an expensive thing. Um, so you'll take that starter pack. You'll you get some warm water, so just some room temperature water, not warm, and you'll add the starter pack to the water. I've been putting a little bit of sugar in it because that that bacteria likes a sugary, you know. It, it likes a sugary environment. I That's did, its food. I added some too. Yeah, a little yeah, bit of sugar. Yeah, I have sugar. Yeah, and you yeah. can do a little bit of salt too. Really, you don't even need the starter pack. If yeah. you If you're really it, does crunched. It take, does it take longer if you don't It takes starter? longer. Yeah. yeah, it takes a little bit longer, but, you know, it's, yeah. you know, a little bit cheaper. So you can, you can just use a salt water brine and, and it'll work just fine. Mm-hmm. But we've done the, the, the starter pack, a little sugar, and... A certain ratio of salt. I want to say a couple teaspoon, t- teaspoons or tablespoons mm-hmm. of salt, and uh, you use that as your base. So once you're done chopping up all your veggies, you take a cup or two out, mm-hmm. put it in a real strong blender, pour your, you know, pour your base over top of it and blend away. You want to you want to turn it into a liquid. 
So what, what that does is you're mixing the vegetables that that are part of your fermented, you know, kimchi, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it, as food for that probiotic starter. Okay. Right. So they're gonna feed off of the sugar that's in those vegetables. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's that's how they do their thing. That's how they eat, that's how they put off their probiotic pro- properties. So mix all that together in your pot, you know, pour pour your liquid over top. And then she she's the bomb at mixing it up. She just gets in there, takes her hands, <laughs> and just goes you. to town. Either he's doing that, so you'll keep doing it. Come, come <laughs> yeah, because that's my <laughs> it's reverse psychology here. She's the best. She does shopper. the hard parts. Yeah, she does really the hard parts. You know, chopping it up and mixing it up. <laughs> Sounds like the whole process. Lydia. Yeah, yeah, it's all her. So what do you do? Leah does I just everything. Coach. I just coach <laughs> <from> the sideline. <laughs> all he does is stand there and say everything he just said. Pats, yeah. pats me on the back. Good keep job. going. You're doing great. Need a drink. Need a drink. The other thing too is my fist doesn't fit in a mason jar, but she's got these little hands and they they're great at packing like little, yeah. I was, he's like you, your fist isn't gonna fit in there I'm like watch me <laughs> That's so i will say oh, this too yeah. the a couple couple issues that we've had um you've got a wide mouth mason jar and you've got the narrow mouth mason jar obviously neither one of us can fit our fists in the narrow mouth so you know we've tried stuffing it down in there with like the back of a wooden spoon okay it doesn't just it just doesn't get packed enough and we actually had to throw a batch out that was in one of the narrow mouth um, mason jars because it, it well, got moldy. You just didn't it, compact it, it down enough? It didn't get compacted far enough. So you want to have enough liquid to where it kind of, it almost, it does or almost reaches the top of your vegetables once they're packed down into okay. the jar. And once you start packing, you'll see some of the juices start coming up. It's not just from what you're pouring in there. It's from what's, you know, what they've also formed yeah, the, the, right. the chopped veggies have their own yeah. juices, you right, know. And once right, you start right. stuffing your fist into them, they're going to release some <laughs> some of that some of that juice. Um, one thing that we did forget to mention too was with your cabbage. Your cabbage is your main your main vegetable. You want to tear all the outside leaves off until you get down to that you know nice dense middle part of your cabbage. You tear all those leaves off because you're going to use them to cover up your vegetables once they're stuffed into the jars it creates a like nice a top little, layer yeah it creates right. like a nice little blanket. barrier <laughs> yeah blanket between your <laughs> between that between the air and the vegetables so you want to eliminate the air from the jars and we've only had one jar out of the maybe 50 that we've done mold that went bad that, mm-hmm. that molded and you'll gotcha. be able to tell Oh, yeah. A lot of times the uh, the cabbage leaves will get moldy, but nothing underneath will get moldy if you if you pack it down tight enough. Cool. So you're using those cabbage leaves as like your 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 line of defense. Nice. Yeah, my first batch was successful, so I was really happy about awesome. that. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now you'll start experimenting with different vegetables. Oh, I know. I'm excited. Well, nice. The list goes. Best. The list is endless. I it mean, really we, is. cabbage, beets, nice. carrots, onions, yeah. ginger, garlic, kale, any leafy Don't green. Don't be afraid really. of the ginger. Leah, Don't, Leah yeah. talked no. me into the ginger. I'm not I a huge a fan. Girl. It made a huge difference. And my uh, my one year old loves it. We were talking about that at dinner too. She's just she's awesome. But she um she loved it too. So. And that's awesome for her because just gut general. health in general, mm-hmm. I just it affects everything. Um, I know I showed shared that article with you on Facebook that one time. Um, it was just talking about how gut health affects like toddlers their moods and yeah. um, how it can you know a lot of terrible tooth things that come up can actually just be a gut health issue, mm-hmm. yeah. which is super interesting. I, I definitely want to research that more. Yeah. I know kids that have like autism, they recommend Absolutely. that type of stuff as well. Yeah, I think it's awesome that you feed your one year old. From, yeah. I mean, m- my awesome. mom, yeah, no, right. no way. <laughs> I'm feeding her little baby sour vegetables that have been sitting out in the open for a week. No way, right. Jose. She would have never done that. But yeah. it, it's just an outward thinking process. You got to yeah. think outside the box a little bit here. Yeah, um, it might seem a little dangerous on the outside, but really, it's not. If you if you follow the steps and you know, you pack your jars tightly, you're going to get a great product here. I mean, yeah. we eat it with literally everything. everything. I mean, it really does go with burgers, it goes with salads, everything. Yeah. It's great. Like chili, stew, any and yeah. everything. It really just add, it adds like that extra little bit of flavor yeah. that you like crave. Yeah. yeah. It's Once we started awesome. doing beets too, I mean, it's just taking off. The beets are amazing. I need to get into beets. <laughs> I need to get into adding beets to that. Yeah. Yeah, because pur- I do love beets. The purple beets just turned the whole batch purple too, so it's and a really cool color. That's pretty. It looks great on Instagram, yeah. you know. <laughs> so what are like? So I know you guys have been re- like you guys have researched fermentation a lot. Just some of the benefits, because I know people know like gut health, but like when you ferment vegetables, like 
the nutrients are more bioavailable. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. They absorb so just, easier. So with everything you're eating, if you have a healthier gut, mm-hmm. you're going to be able to absorb more nutrients right. from the other foods that you're eating. It's not just about the fermented vegetables. It's about everything else that you're eating with them. Right. You, you can't get, eat fermented veggies with McDonald's and act like it's going to, you know, benefit right, right. you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you want to put these with your egg. You, you know, your your pasteurized eggs and your, you know. Your leafy your, green salads. Yeah, your, your salads. It's a great like we make we make our own salad dressings now. We don't yeah. buy salad dressing, so it's just olive oil, a little bit of vinegar, and when you scoop some of those fermented veggies onto your into your salad, it That's comes with a little bit of juice, go. and it's good to go. Yeah, you know? I mean, it, and it awesome. tastes great. Yeah, I think um, people take like they they think making stuff like that is so hard, like yeah. making your own salad. You, you can make a salad dressing in like. Minutes. Two seconds. Minutes. Yeah, she does it so fast. Just, it's just cut. You don't even know I'm doing it. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> you, you like turn your head and I'm done by the time you're turning back and you around. you can get so creative with it too. Like Definitely. You take some citrus. Take a, a half of a lemon, half of a lime, half of an orange, whatever. Juice it. Some olive oil. Your favorite type of vinegar. Mm-hmm. You're done. There you can you throw go. some a little bit of spice. She's been throwing some spices in, like oregano, basil, ca- a little cayenne if you like it spicier. What you get? Yeah. You can get super creative. With yeah, it. definitely. And I'm the person that is super lazy. <laughs> yeah. So I try to make, especially throughout the week. Like on the weekends, we actually cook. But throughout yeah. the week, like today, I had two boiled eggs and half an avocado. Easy. Yeah. Super easy. Took me maybe 15 minutes to do my eggs, and approximately a minute and 20 seconds to cut my avocado <laughs> but for <like> creative <laughs> cutting <laughs> she's just, the best avocado cutter so, in the state so, but I, hear. <laughs> I have a medal um, yeah so like salad dressings jordan's like why don't you do this and i'm like no let's just drizzle, drizzle it on there you don't gotta measure you don't have no, to no we don't measure you don't have to you know do any ratios, you know, just do it how you think it's going to taste good. Yeah. And I am a balsamic vinegar freak. Me too. Freak. Love balsamic. If I find it on sale and it's a good <laughs> one, you can guarantee I'm going to buy two, maybe three. Two for me, one for him. <laughs> right. I'm like, stock your cabinets because when I come over, I'm using it. Yeah. So I just throw on some olive oil and some balsamic and then I just throw the spices together. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so easy. easy. Some of the other oils too that we're, we've been playing with too are... Um, Avocado oil mm-hmm. is a, a great awesome. one. I mean, it's yeah. it's amazing. Um, I haven't got too much into hemp seed oil, but I haven't either. I, I've been wanting to though. Yeah, but I mean, hemp. Se- I eat a lot of hemp seeds with yeah. our, with our salads mm-hmm. or smoothies or whatever. So it's something that I will experiment with soon. She said balsamic vinegar. Vinegar. We use apple cider vinegar. Yeah. We white use wine, white wine vinegar, red wine, red wine vinegar. Any kind of vinegar, we'll do it. coconut vinegar, we got mm-hmm. recently, and that's pretty. You like it? Yeah, 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 yeah. it does. It nice. just adds a little different little twist. So if you get it's bored cool. with your olive oil and and, and balsamic, then switch it up. You know, try something else out. It's just, yeah. it's, you can buy a new bottle of anything you want. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it's awesome. Stay away from the canola and seed yeah. oils, though. Those are not good. Really, really terrible for, for Definitely. your body, especially when you see like. Uh, what is it like non-GMO organic canola it's like <laughs> the whole thing is GMO I don't understand like, yeah I don't know how they get away with that it, it's insane I really don't know how it's they get away with that not even the fine print on the bottom probably says this is just kidding GMO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I listened to a podcast recently too on, can, on canola oil mm-hmm. the, the reason it's so bad for us is because it oxidizes yeah. so easily a little bit of heat a little bit of light the oil oxidizes and oxidized oil does a lot of harm to your cells. Mm-hmm. You, your cells will all, always regenerate. But if you're piling this, these awful oils on top every single day, you know, going through McDonald's, obviously they're going to use their cheap, the cheapest oils, mm-hmm. canola oils and whatnot. Right. That stuff adds up. And you know, we're, right now we're faced with a huge problem in this country: we, disease, obesity, diabetes, everywhere, everywhere you look. Kids are just so medicated. Kids, yeah, medicated children. So. You really got to take a step back and look at what, why, why is this happening? Exactly. And these, these, these oils, these oxidized oils, and all the added sugars that are that are in products and stores are, is the foundation for it. So you got to figure out how to replace those things with healthy oils, olive oil, avocado mm-hmm. oil. Right. Get rid of the processed sugars. If you and want. you're cooking with them properly as well. It, right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We cook with coconut oil because it doesn't oxidize very easily. Butter. Butter, ghee, um, olive oil strictly for your salad dressing. Because it, it 
Yeah. You yeah. Know. It oxidizes easily too. It's, it's got a low smoke point. Of, you know, it, it it heats up. You can see it smoking very early in the, the yeah. cooking process. That's how you know it's oxidizing is when you see that smoke. So use coconut oil to cook with. If you're cooking veggies or really whatever, use coconut oil. It's the mm-hmm. yeah. best oil for cooking. And it doesn't. People don't. People think it's gonna make their food taste like coconut. But it doesn't. No. No. It, it doesn't no. at all. You don't taste it. No, that's that's awesome. So, real quick before we get into what Jordan's getting into, so I, Leah, I kind of wanted you to talk just for you know a second. So Leah has an interesting kind of background because she's. I just you know tell about your job that you have right now and just what you're seeing firsthand because I know it's it's hard for you to be there, mm-hmm. but at the same time you're learning so oh, much. Yeah. So um, I just I think it's just really interesting what you're you know. So about a year ago. I took an opportunity with a locally owned pharmacy with not a lick of knowledge of pharmaceuticals or, I mean, I couldn't tell you the last time I had to have a prescription filled. Um, So it was all brand new. And I was actually diving even deeper into the compounding era of pharmaceuticals, which is where we customize prescriptions based on patient needs so if it's something that's not commercially available we make it it's pretty cool sort of kind of a couple different things are and since within the last year you know learning more and listening to podcasts and things that Jordan and I are experimenting with like in the garden in the kitchen you know in the gym and seeing like these patients and these kids or elderly and how people just leech on to pharmaceuticals has really been a very sad eye opener. I never, I personally never relied on pharmaceuticals for myself for anything serious. So if it were to be I mean, I don't know about cancer and, you know, that extreme of illnesses, but, you know, if you have a cold or the flu or, you know, your your minor aches and pains and people are so fast to go to the doctor to get medications, I've started to, like, step back further and further and think of the ways that people should be taking care of their bodies in order to avoid that. Right. Through food. Through food. Yeah. Through exercise and... You know, it's been, especially, I'm going to say within the past few months, it's been really difficult to, you know, appreciate what I'm doing. But at the same time, like, I learn something daily. Or I'm I'm meeting doctors and, you know, staff in hospitals who, you know, some of them have the same mindset and others are kind of just in it for business. Right. So it's, it's been... It's a journey, definitely a journey for me, but watching, just watching the way people and this, like the, the consumer base of any pharmaceutical, whether it's Zyrtec or Gabapentin or anything in between is really, really difficult. Yeah. It's really difficult because I'm 26, right? 26. <laughs> So, like, what if I decide that one day I want to have kids? Yeah. Do I want my baby to be on medication when they're one month old? Because what does that do to that baby's body for the rest of their life? Exactly. And the people that are 90 and, you know, they're still getting their prescriptions filled, when did they get their first prescription? Right. You know, or what did, what did their life bring them to this point to where they have to have this prescription every single day for the rest of their lives? Not only is it costly, but... You're costing your you're costing your body, and you don't you're you're not experimenting you're not experiencing true true life. Right. You like you're not you experiencing are experiencing your full potential. And, you're not thinking. So people like you're you know to be. they attach the label addiction to heroin and meth and you know all these street drugs, but honestly, is it really much different from being addicted to your your thyroid medication or no. your you know, your diabetic medication when you could have went an alternate route and took and take care of yourself through food. You know, if you have diabetes, I do believe that there are ways that you can cure that or obviously prevent it. 
um, even mental illnesses such as like Alzheimer's. I do believe that you can prevent it, especially if you know that it's in your timeline of your family. I would do everything in my power to assure that I would not fall into that category. Absolutely. Because if you've witnessed someone that's had that, it's awful. It's terrible. It's awful. And you don't want to pass that on to the rest of your family. Right. Or like, what if you have kids? Do you, yeah. you know, or will you ever be able to have kids? Or do, are you going to deteriorate before then? Right. So it, it, my mind can go like a million miles an hour on it. But at the end of the day, I just think to myself, like, number one, I'm thankful that I take care of myself, that I don't have to do this. I don't have to get my prescriptions filled. I don't have to call the doc for more refills. Or I don't have to make another appointment. And your kids to go won't sit, either. And my kids won't either. Exactly. Or, yeah. you know... I, I know that I can go on vacation in a month because I'm going to feel good. You know, yeah. I think it's, it's all about where you are in your mind. And I hear people say it all the time, even as, as simple as this, like, oh, I think I'm getting sick. And then in three days, they're sick. They're going to the doctor. They're getting cold meds. They're getting this. They're getting, you know, they're going to the over the counter to get the cough drops, to get this. And it's like, what all is actually in that? Right. What is truly benefiting you from that? Or is it all just material items that are... It's a Band-Aid. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like you're, you're not sick because you're deficient in Tylenol. Right. right. You know, so it's... it's yeah. and, insane. And, and it's, again, probably something that Jordan, you know, opened up my eyes to. It's been, what, like two years now? And he asked, he asked, when demanding, he's like, I want you to stop taking... Or I think you should stop taking like Excedrin and Tylenol mm -hmm. and aspirin. And I was like, well, why? You know, he'd read some articles and heard some mm -hmm. information that, you know, it, it leads to negative side effects later on down the road. So why would you continue to do it? And I think maybe in two years, I've probably taken it like two or three times, but at the same time, coated my body in peppermint oil. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. so I'm like, I love it. Uh, it balances out, but... You know, and especially growing up, I grew up in a household where, like, my grandpa, my dad's dad, he was physically and just mentally ill. He was a great man. Love him. Love him with all my heart. Rest in peace. But he was always on, like, pain meds and, like, nerve pills, muscle relaxers. And I just, you know, I never really understood it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any interest to understand it. And then once... You know, my dad started getting into his prescriptions because he had surgery and torn ligaments and all that. I was still kind of like, I don't understand it. And then actually, my senior, well, I guess I'm contradicting myself a little bit. My senior year of high school, I had these excruciating headaches. Excruciating. I couldn't sleep. Mm. I couldn't, like, when, it, when I'd fall asleep, I couldn't wake up. I was late for school. I was starting to get in trouble in school because they were like, why is Lisa, Leah missing? Yeah. And my dad took me to a doctor, and he said, I'm going to refer you to a neurologist. Makes sense. So we go to one of the worst neurologists in Charleston, West Virginia, who at the age of, I think I was still 17 at the time maybe, or about to turn 18, prescribed me to a sleeping pill, a muscle relaxer, and a pain pill. That's crazy. <laughs> so that is it, insane. Wait, how old again? I think I was 17. Oof. Yeah, let's just say no longer is this doctor practicing. I think he might be in jail or still fighting legally. Not from just me, but from... Can you imagine how from, many people beside exactly, you? And yeah, they're the, probably the still hundreds, taking that. The hundreds and thousands of people that that happens to and you... Everyone, everyone jumps for the doctor. But that pads right. his pockets, you know. He's got to keep pushing that stuff because that's ultimately where his paycheck comes from. So, right. so it, that's why the system's kind of back. It lasted for a few months and, you know, sure, whatever, I'm on a pain pill. I don't really know if I'm in pain anymore because that's it. not, yeah. Right. And it sadly got to a point where my insurance got cut off because I turned 18 mm -hmm. and we were below poverty. I had Medicaid, no more insurance when you're 18 due to this living situation, I didn't get prescriptions anymore. So I was just cold turkey. Did you have like done a withdrawal from that? No. You just, no? Well, that's, I a, good, think, that's a good I, thing. Though. Yeah, and I think um, I was aware of what the drugs were that I was 
at that point, I was like, I really don't think that I need these. Right. But whatever. So other people, it's just, there's so many, I, it's sad. It really is sad. It really, it really is, really sad. is sad. sad. And being so young, I'm glad that I was aware enough to know that it wasn't right. Yeah. Because I was like, why do I need 10 milligrams of Norco a day, M- multiple times a day? I mean, I was getting 100, 100 tablets of 10 milligram Norcos Man. for a month. It just kills me. I mean, just as, you know, as a, a chiropractor, month. like, you know, we look for what's the root cause mm-hmm. in an issue. And, and, head, it wasn't and migraines that. is like, you know, one of the biggest things that people will come to see a chiropractor for. And, you know, you get the spine in the right alignment. Everything can function and heal like it's supposed to. Migraines go away, you know, because yeah. your body's function not because of what we did, but it's because your body's functioning and healing properly. And it's like, and the same thing with nutrition, you put the right fuel in, your body does what it's supposed mm-hmm. to do. You know, a pill can't yeah. ever fix that. And it's, it's super sad. I think, you know, we go down, we're going down the nutrition rabbit hole. Yep. Where we're finding all these things that are, that are helping us in their own little ways. And not everybody's like that. Every, you know, some people go down the medication rabbit hole, yep. and it just kind of spirals out of control. Yeah. So, at some point, the system's got to change. Yeah, you know? and, and like it's it's and for some doctors, it really the doctors aren't. Some of them aren't. But I'm not. It's nice to say some. Most doctors are not bad people. They're doctors because they want to help people. Right. But what they're taught in school, they're not taught nutrition. Right. Almost all medical schools, they don't. They're not taught in nutrition. It might be an elective or a recommendation. They don't mm-hmm. have to take it. But it's a system. It's not right. that they're bad people. It's it's the, the system. system's broken. It's the system. Right. I do think we're like even just reflecting on that now is part of the reason as to now why today I I just don't agree with the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. I mean everything you've had to see, it's, like but like, you know, we said you've seen it for a reason. Right. Like your life's completely changed because yeah. of that. So yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, now we're just going down that that road where we're just it. like trying to trying everything <laughs> it, you know just yeah. like like you mentioned before we started started a garden last year and that's been Very a, whole, cool. a whole adventure on its yeah. own gardening the essential oils yes. we've really we've really expanded our well our cabinets of spices yep <laughs> i am i'm like the salad queen the chopping <laughs> queen avocado the avocado <laughs> yeah and i recently found my little my little hole to get Good organic spices. It's really cool. And we're just yeah. like, what can we put in this dish? What can we put in this the dish? Cabinets are full of spices. Or what can right we put now. in coffee? And I'm like, do it all. Let's do it all. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. And uh, Jordan, I know you have a, a website, and um, <laughs> yeah. I'm super excited for it. So yeah, why don't you talk about it? The name of it, and we'll just so you know, we're, we're gonna put all of the links to there's both of their social medias um, in the show notes. That way you can just go and click. Um, and like keep up with what they're doing because their pictures of what they eat every day is a work of art <laughs> and it makes me like really sad that I don't present my food in the way that they do but <laughs> no it's really awesome but um, but I'll put all the links that we talk about at, at, at the end so cool okay. yeah so all right so I recently just started a new website it's something that I've wanted to do for a while but I'm finally to the point in my life where I think I have something to, to give other people to build on you know we started cooking. Yep. You know, at first we're cooking meals with canola oils and whatever, you know, just the things that we've learned. But through time, we've learned how to get those bad ingredients out and put the good ingredients in. And mm-hmm. so I'm using this blog and this website to, to help promote my idea, our idea of, of what healthy eating looks like, what you should be doing for exercise and to get a little bit of enjoyment out of travel. And I, I haven't got to the travel section of, of my blog yet. We literally just started like two weeks ago, but yeah. I've got some good posts about how to go to the grocery store, um, what, what types of exercise you should be doing. So if you want to check out, that out, um, the website's thepassionsofchrist.com. <laughs> Love the uh, name. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a suggestion from some some Facebook fans there. My last name is Chris, so that had a nice little ring to it. Uh, <laughs> Kind of funny, kind of kind of quirky, kind of like weird. It. But, you know, <laughs> it's easy might, to remember. Might get some negative reaction, no, but no. might get some positive about it too. So um, today, I, I finalized and posted a blog about what 
how to how to navigate through the grocery store. What you should be looking for, what you should, what you should be, awesome. be buying, and what you should be staying away from. Um, there's eight little tips in there. It's very applicable for everybody. So check it out and drop me a comment. Tell me what you think. Cool. You know? I'm excited for it. I'm excited Thank you. To see I appreciate the it. Different yeah. talk. Are you gonna like guest post? She or? should. I think you should. I think you definitely I just, should. I hide in the background and uh, go over the rough drafts. She snaps the. Uh, She's photos. the photographer. Man, yeah, what yeah. don't you do? Oh, yeah, no. She makes sure it makes it's got to look pretty. It has. It does have to look oh, pretty. Yeah. But she, you know, really, she comes up with a lot of these recipes. It's not all just my thing or whatever. This is this is us trying different things out in the kitchen, mm-hmm. and we keep the things we like, and you know, we dish the things that we don't like. Um, but it's all about experimenting. You know, yeah. s- start at the grocery store, get the right ingredients, start small. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Yeah, don't stress yeah. about it. You know, you're yeah. gonna learn in the process, and that's what we found. You know, I think early early on we stressed about trying to be perfect with everything. Mm-hmm. With, the garden, everything. You know, we we want we want it to work right the first try. It doesn't always work out that way. You know, yeah. our first batch of fermented veggies was eh, it was okay, but two, three, now, four versions later, they're now great. they're yeah. great. You know, so you got to try these things. You got to work on your. You got to sh- sharpen your toolbox. You know, add more tools to the toolbox. Sharpen your craft, mm-hmm. and eventually, you're gonna have all kinds of tools to to create a health, healthier life for yourself. You know, definitely, definitely. Cool. People are afraid of failure. That's what we've been trying to. It's the only way to learn. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only way to learn. That's what we. Uh, I just recorded with a really um, awesome guy yesterday, and it was all. He has a, a brand. It's called Failure Is Not an Option. Beneo. He works with young athletes, and it's just that was pretty much everything we just talked there about. It's just failing forward. It's you know. Yeah, forward, fail fast, fail forward. Exactly. The only way to fa- learn. The faster you fail, exactly. the faster you're going to be able to correct it, learn, and move on. Yep. Awesome. I think it's a good place to wrap it up. You guys are yeah. amazing, and I love you both. <laughs> and um, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna put all of the links in the show notes for both of their social medias: um, Facebook, Instagram, his website. Um, soon, Leah's website because I know it's coming. Or a book. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for her book. But, um, but yeah, so I'll put everything in. And thank you guys for coming on. Thanks, Thanks for having Casey. us.